All right, so in today's lesson, what we're going to do is learn how to design and draft in AutoCAD for plasma cutting, for the purpose of plasma cutting, a CNC plasma cutter. So what we're looking at right now is one of the students did this drawing that could basically show us some different ideas he wanted to use for the plates that we're going to be making for the cube of doom. So there's basically six different plates that all go together to create a cube. So whenever we look at these individually, what we have to look at is, first of all, this is the outline. This is the actual plate. So if we took this right here, this part right here would actually be cut out. So this would be a void in the metal. Everything else would be left. So this one could work. Whenever I look at this, if I cut out the outline of this, it's basically going to lose all the detail on the inside. So I'd have to come up with different ways to make that work. So this one, as it's drawn right now, will not work. This one, there's things on the inside and the outside. All this stuff on the inside would get lost. And the other problem is it goes the whole way out to the edge of the plate, so there wouldn't be any metal left there right at that edge. We look at the six. We'll jump to the six real quick. If I was going to have this six cut out, basically I would lose this part as well. So it's a common theme. Whatever is going to be left on the inside is going to be taken out as far as the metal, what, what's left on the metal. So what's left on the metal is just going to be out here. So if I wanted this to be, to remain, I'm going to have to connect it to this metal here with a couple little lines. The same kind of thing here, it's going to just cut out the outline for this. So if I wanted these to remain, I'm going to have to connect them to the part that, part of the metal that stays. This one would probably work pretty well, and I would just lose this part out here at the outer rim. So let's just start with one of these, and so whenever I open up AutoCAD, this is basically what I'm going to see. This is the screen that it starts out with. And my screen is compacted to a certain degree because it's up on the projector as well. And it's a, a different resolution. So these things could actually be expanded. You might see those on your tool palettes. So the ones that we're going to focus on for the most part are draw and modify. And we can also come up here and we can switch to different, different menus. Some of these will be duplicated on different menus. But for the most part, we're going to stay on this home screen for now. And we're going to use these to start drawing and these tools to start modifying. Now down here in my drawing area, I also have a command line. So whenever I first started out with AutoCAD, I could go through and type in all the commands. I can still do that. For somebody that's just starting out, it's probably easier to come up here and choose them from the menus. I'll probably be doing both ways whenever I show you how to do this. And then right here, as you see, you see I zoom out, we have a few other things on the screen. We have our Y axis, our X axis. So that basically means that we're looking at a top view. We're looking down at the parts. And I can actually switch that around by clicking on this view cube. So I can look at it from that direction, this direction, and I can go back to my top view. So whenever I'm drawing parts for a plasma cutting, everything's going to be in the top view because everything is the same thickness. If I'm using eighth inch metal to cut, everything's going to be an eighth inch. So I don't need to see any of this. And I really don't like working with these grid lines either. So the easiest way to turn these off 
I can come down here and there's different tools that I can use to turn those off. I have object snaps, which we'll talk more about. Um, and I also have this right here, which I always just hit the F7, bu F7 button and it turns that off. I can also turn off this icon by going to view and click off uh, UCS icon. So now I just have a blank screen to work with. That's a little bit about the user interface. Next we'll go through and start drawing some things. Alright, whenever I want to start drawing things, I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to choose a line. And whenever I do that, it's really useful to keep an eye on what it's asking you for on the command line. It's always going to, whenever you do a command, it's always going to be asking you for something or telling you something. So right now, it says line specify first point. So what that really means is where do you want to start drawing a line from? I'm just going to randomly pick a spot. So I click, left click my mouse and it starts the line from there and then it says specify next point. So I could literally just go around left click, left click, left click and it'll draw a bunch of different lines. So we can start out by doing that. Alright, after I have these lines drawn, I can just hit enter or I can hit the space bar for enter or I can hit escape to get out of the command. So there's a few different ways that I can get out of that command. If I don't hit enter, the space bar, space bar or escape, I'm just going to keep on drawing lines. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is the zooms. So the way that I look at this, I can hit, spin the wheel on my mouse down or in and it zooms in and out. It's not changing the size of these lines, it's just looking at it from further away or up close. So that is by spinning the wheel on my mouse. The next thing that you could do to change your view, how you're looking at it, is I can press the wheel on the mouse in and it grabs this little hand and now I'm just panning around. Again, I'm not moving this, I'm just changing how I'm viewing. So if I want to look at each individual corner maybe, I can zoom in pan, zoom out, zoom in, pan, zoom in, pan. So it becomes really handy to do that. A lot of times people will use these scroll bars that show up on the screen a lot of the times to change how they're viewing. This is a lot quicker just using the wheel on your mouse. Alright, so the next thing is I want to talk about selections. So right now, I, I really don't want to cut this out of a piece of metal. So I'm going to delete this. So I could literally click on each object and then hit delete. I could also click on the object, hit this erase button up here on my modify palette. And I could also do a window around it and delete. So right now, there's two different ways that I can do a window. So I'm just going to draw a circle real quick so I can demonstrate this. If I use the erase command, it's asking me to select objects. So right now, again, I could select it by just clicking on it. I can also do a window. So there's two different types of windows. I can go from right to left and the window becomes green and if I go from left to right, the window becomes blue. There are two different ways to select. So if I do a green one, it's anything that the window touches, it will erase. So it doesn't have to completely enclose the circle for it to erase. So I can just cross it and hit enter. If I do the erase command from the other direction and I just cross it, it's not going to erase it. So if I'm doing it this direction with the blue, blue rectangle, 
I have to completely enclose that. I have to select the entire thing, not just cross it. That becomes really, really handy, and it's just one of those things that eventually, after you use this a lot, you'll start to understand that you won't even have to think about it. So my last command was erase, so I'm just going to hit my space bar, and that'll get me my erase command up again. It's asking me to select objects. I'm just going to do a window, and I'm going to hit enter. So why don't we just go ahead and start drawing some of the parts that we had in that sketch. All right, so whenever we look at these, let's focus on drawing this image right here. So I'll bring AutoCAD back over. It basically looks like a wheel. All right, so before I draw anything on the inside, I want to draw my rectangle or the one side of the cube, and I'm going to do that by drawing a line. So again, I'm going to click the line button. I could also hit L, enter, and then I'm just, it's going to ask me for my first point. I'm just going to randomly pick a point, and now Whenever I do this, I could kind of get this real, real straight like this, but it's not always going to be perfectly straight if I do that. And I can look at it, and whenever I list it to find out its properties, it's actually telling me the angle in plane is 89 degrees right there. So even though it looks pretty straight, it's not straight. So what I can do is I can turn it turn on my ortho. So the ortho button is right here. It's this little button here and the easier way to do that is to hit F8 on your keyboard. And now I'm forced to draw either a horizontal or vertical line. So the next thing is if I'm drawing this line, my the one side of my cube is 3 by 3, the steel plate that I'm going to cut out. So I have to tell it to go up 3 inches. So if I say 3 inches and I hit enter, and I typed in 3 inches, and I say enter, it's going to give me an error. It's going to give me some strange error that says something to the effect of invalid point or point or option keyword required. So this is AutoCAD has its own kind of language that doesn't make any sense, but what it's really saying is, hey, I don't know what an inch is. So if I escape out of this and I look at my units, and it may be on manage, view, it's in one of these locations. After a little bit of looking around, the units are on the application menu up here. So I click on that, go to Drawing Utilities, and then I click Units. So I get this little screen here pops up. And the problem that we were having is AutoCAD didn't know what inches were because we were using decimal. So I can change this to architectural, and I can even change the precision down to a 32nd of an inch. And I just say OK. Now, whenever I do my line, I still have my ortho on, I point upward, and I say 3 inches, enter. Now I just drew a line 3 inches. And I can do 3 inches, enter. Just point it down, 3 inches, enter, 3 inches, enter. Now, it's still going to draw another line. I don't want to draw a line over top of a line, so I hit escape. And now I have my 3 inch by 3 inch square that I can start drawing in. Once I have my square drawn, now I can draw my circle in here. 
So to do the circle command, I'm just going to click circle, and it's asked me for my center point. So I'm just going to click something like that. And then I'm going to draw a circle like that. And the problem with this is it's not exactly where I want it to be. I want it to be exactly centered within this space. So I'm just going to click it, delete. And this time, before I draw my circle, I'm just going to draw a diagonal from this corner to that corner. And the thing that I want you to notice here is whenever I hover my mouse over top of this intersection of these two lines where they come together, I get this little green square pop up. That's one of my O snaps. And you can see that is an end point. So what happens is whenever I get close to the end point of a line, even though my cursor is up here, it automatically snaps to that end point. That helps me draw very accurately. So I'm going to draw a line from that end point to that end point. And then I'm going to hit escape to get out of the command. Now I know the midpoint of this line is the center of the circle. So do I have a midpoint O snap? I can come down here to my toolbar and I can click on my O snaps and I'm going to do the object setting, object snap settings. And I'm going to make sure midpoint is checked. So right now I have endpoint, midpoint, center, quadrant, intersection, perpendicular. Those are the ones that I like to work with the most. Every once in a while I'll turn some others on and off, but those are the ones that I leave on most of the time. Say OK. And now, whenever I draw a circle, and I, I'm looking for the midpoint, I get close to the middle of that line, and it automatically snaps to that. The midpoint is a little triangle, and it also has that little text there that says midpoint. So now, whenever I draw this, it's basically going to ask me for specify radius of circle or diameter. So right now, the radius is the default. The one that starts out is the default, and the one that's in brackets here is the one that I can change it to. So to change it to diameter, I can either type D out here, or I can click on diameter. So the diameter of this circle, if my box is three altogether, I'm going to make this maybe 2.5 and that gives me a quarter inch of steel out here to work with whenever I weld it all together. I hit enter and now I have that circle. So the problem with this is if I put anything on the inside of this for plasma cutting it's all going to get lost as soon as it cuts this circle out. Everything on the inside of this is going to drop out. So what I can do is just have another circle in here, and I'm going to do that by using my offset command on the modify. So I'm going to click offset. Whenever I click offset, the first thing it asks me for, offset specified distance. So I'm going to offset that in an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to type in 0.125, enter. And then it asks me to select the object to offset. So I'm going to choose the circle, and now I could either offset it outward or inward. I'm going to do this inward. So I choose something on the inside, and then I hit enter to get out of that command. So right now, I would basically still be cutting out this outside and leaving the inside. So I have to connect this outside to something on this outside metal if I want to keep this. So what I could do is I could draw a line and this time I'm going to choose quadrant. So a circle has four quadrants. So I could choose this quadrant and I'm just going to draw the line out there and this time I'm going to do offset again 
and I'm going to offset it 0 0.0625, which is a sixteenth of an inch. So if I offset this line both directions, a sixteenth, that means I have an eighth from here to there. So I got a problem here. Whenever I zoom in real close, it's not actually touching that. So I can do this a couple different ways. I can just click on it and grab this grip and stretch it up past. Or I could use my extend. I could do it a lot of different ways actually. I can use my extend slash trim tool. And whenever I use extend, it says select objects. Select objects. I have to come up here and look to see what it really wants. Select boundary edges. So what it's really asking you is, hey, what would you like to extend the line to? I want to extend it to this circle. Okay, so we're done with that. Now I have to hit enter to tell it that I'm done selecting the objects to extend to. And now it says select objects to extend. So I have to pick this line. I hit enter. And now I have this kind of thing here. I just have to clean it up a little bit. All right, to clean this up, I'm going to use the trim command. So whenever I come up here, and I'm looking through these different things here. I have to find the trim command. It's the opposite of extend. So I select trim. So now, select cutting edges. So if you can imagine the cutting edges to be kind of like scissors. So I could have multiple scissors to cut with. So I'm going to choose this line and this line as the scissors. So if you can imagine the scissors cutting where these lines are aligned with the lines, then I hit enter to let it know that I'm done selecting the cutting edges. So now I have to select object to trim. So what part of this do you want to get rid of? Do I want to get this rid of this part of the circle, this part, or this part? I want to get rid of these parts in here. So I select that and that. I hit enter. I can delete this line altogether. And I'm going to do trim again. So this time whenever I cut select the cutting edges, I'm just going to choose that part of the circle and that part of the circle again. I'm going to hit enter and I want to keep these parts, so I'm not going to select those. But I want to get rid of this, that, and that. And what I'm left with, whenever I'm looking at what part's going to be left, you can see that it would fill in here. We have a pretty neat little command called hatch. And I can just type H enter. And I can choose hatch. And I'm going to use a solid hatch. And it basically is asking you to pick the points to hatch. And what this is kind of like is if I had a bucket of paint and I was going to pour it in here, where will it fill in? So if I chose this right here, it would fill in that space. I like to pick out here and it shows you real quickly that this is the metal and this part right here is going to be the part that's cut out. So it's a real quick easy way of seeing how that's actually going to look. So now that I have this done, I would like to do the same thing at least in two other spots, maybe four or three other spots in each quadrant, so that the whole thing isn't supported with just one little tiny piece of metal. So what I can do is I can use my array command. So I come up here and I have a pull down. The default one is rectangular array. And you can see the little video that shows you kind of how that works. I'm going to choose a polar array, which if we hover over that, we should get a nice little video that displays that. A 
polar array is used whenever you're working with a circular object. So I'm going to choose that. Select objects. So it wants to know what objects I want to array. I'm going to do my selection box this direction. Instead of doing it this one that crosses any, it selects anything that it crosses, I'm going to do it this direction. And the only two things that it's completely encompassing are those two lines. So I'm going to select that, and I'm going to hit Enter. Now it asks me to specify center point of array. I need to choose the center of the circle. So since I have my center O snap, I can select that and I can hit enter. Then up here the default is for six items to be copied. I only want this to be four. So whenever I click that the angle between changes and my total fill is 360 degrees of the triangle. I hit enter. That finishes it and then I can go back through and I can trim out all these different things on the inside. So I select those and then do that one more time. I hit trim. I select these objects and I can trim out the inside. And I can do the rest as well. Now I'll just go through and trim out the rest of these. I like to use spacebar for enter very quick. And again, I'm going to draw another circle in the middle. And I don't really know how big I want this. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and choose that. And then I'm going to draw a line from the center, and I'm just going to eyeball this one as well, and it's going to come out to this direction, this direction, and I'm going to offset that a sixteenth of an inch each direction. I'm going to come in here to the end. I'm going to draw a line from the end point to the end point. I'm going to erase that line, and I'm going to do trim again. And whenever it asks me for the cutting edges, I'm going to just choose all those, hit enter, and then I'll trim the ends off that and that part off. So I want to have six of these total. So I'm going to use my polar array again. Whenever it asks me to select the objects, I'm going to choose these, hit enter. I'll choose the center of that circle. And now, it's already set up to six, so I'll leave that there. I'll say enter. I'm going to do the trim command again. I'm going to select all these as my cutting edges. Hit enter. And then trim out these inside lines. I think there were some other things out here as well. And I'll just, I'm just going to play around with those. I think I'll try using the offset command. So I'm going to offset, and this time I'm going to say 0.25 to get it down in here. And then I'll offset again. And this time I'll do 0.125. And let's see, I want to do offset one more time, and I'll try offsetting that. Now whenever I try to offset this, it's not letting me because this is all one piece. So whenever I created this array, since it's all part of the array, it won't let me select one individual object. I can explode this, and all I do to explode it, you can see right now it's all one piece. So if I come up here 
there's an explode command in the modify and I'm going to come down through here it used to be a stick of dynamite that's not no longer politically correct yes so to look for it here and I'm not seeing it anywhere this is it right here so now it's exploded 3d view so I select that to explode hit enter and now I can offset this line and this line and once more I will trim and I'm gonna select these objects right here to trim hit enter select those those And then I'll erase these. I can't trim these because there's nothing to trim. I have to erase those parts. And now I have this part right here that I can array again. So this time I'm going to do this selection here. Only things that I completely circle and compass. I hit enter. Choose my puller array and I have to choose that as the center. I'm going to leave this as 6 and it's going to fill in those space. If I change this to something like 12 you can see it's going to put a lot of them in there. If I changed it to 3 you can see it puts it right there. I kind of like the look of that but to match the drawing I was doing, the sketch, I'm going to put 6 in there and I'm going to say enter. So right now, it looks pretty good. As a double check, I can go through and I can type in H, enter for my hatch, and I can select that. And you can see the parts that are in black are cut out, and the parts that are white are going to be part of the metal. So those that lesson right there covered a ton of really useful AutoCAD commands. I can just select that and erase it. We talked about hatching, we talked about arrays, trim, extend, lines, units, circles, object snap or O snaps, ortho. So, and just a really a lot of really good introduction into AutoCAD. These are the primary tools that I use doing most AutoCAD jobs. So in the next one, we'll draw another part and probably use a lot of the same ones and maybe a few extra ones.